Hi guys, see you again on your favorite channel, Shonya Studio. Enjoy the video until it's finished, and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, thank you. His face is tattooed to resemble the Joker movie character, this man has committed many crimes, and went to prison. But even though he is behind bars, how can this man do things that are beyond normal human reasoning, what an unreasonable act. Before we continue, we would like to remind you that the incident we are telling is a true story. This man's name is Jamie Ojuna, he has many criminal stories in the police. Jamie was sentenced to prison after he killed a 36-year-old woman Yvette Pina, a mother of six children. After several years had passed, the case had faded from the public spotlight. The public was shocked again by the news that 31-year-old Jamie Ojuna had disappeared his cellmate in prison in a very sadistic way. Jamie Ojuna, born on the 7th of March, 1988, he grew up in a very complicated family. In 1988 Jamie's mother Michelle, who was 19 years old at the time, married Jamie's biological father who was 21 years old. But Michelle felt at that time the man she chose was not a good man, because he often received physical violence. Early in 1988, when Michelle was heavily pregnant, Jamie's biological father kicked her in the stomach, which made Jamie's ears abnormally shaped, when he was born. In October, 1989, they divorced. Not long after that Jamie's biological father was arrested for violence against a man who was close to Michelle. Michelle then married the new man named Jeff. The marriage took place when Jamie was one year old. Somehow Jamie's new father and his family hate Jamie. When Jamie was eight years old he was thrown a brick by his uncle. There were also incidents such as when eating together with his other siblings. His stepfather kept food away from Jamie, he was tied to a chair and when the other siblings finished eating Jamie was only allowed to eat. And even then with a note, Jamie had to eat on the floor like an animal. At the age of 12, Jamie once asked his mother, why his stepfather was so mean to him, and why his mother never defended Jamie, even tended to support his stepfather's behavior. But his mother never answered the question. In the end in 2000, when Jamie was a teenager, he was allowed to live with his grandparents. When he was 15 years old, Jamie was arrested by the police for stabbing a boy. In an interview Jamie told about his childhood, when he was 9 years old, Jamie had killed many animals, he once put a cat in the refrigerator for 15 minutes, then took the cat out and put it back in the oven. Jamie was very happy to see other creatures tormented, he I feel very powerful when I do that. Despite having a very dark childhood and adolescence, Jamie was married and had children, Let's just call this woman Jane, Jane is not her real name, because to protect the identity of her young child. Jamie and Jane's relationship began with an unusual meeting, in December, 2008. Jane had a party for her 16-year-old teenage son. The party was attended by Jane's family and friends, Jane had become a mother at a very young age. She later divorced with her husband. Jane felt she deserved a great night out so she started dancing with a young man. But from a distance a man who is a friend of Jane's niece, does not like to see that. He fell in love at first sight with Jane, that man is Jamie Ojuna. Jamie then took a knife from the kitchen, and stabbed the man dancing with Jane, but luckily the wound wasn't too bad. Because Jamie was arrested and went to jail. From behind bars, Jamie Ojuna started writing letters to Jane. When they first met at the party, Jane was 37 years old, and Jamie was 20 years old. 
quite a long age range. But this did not dampen Jamie's intentions, Jamie began to flirt. And they wrote letters to each other during Jamie's one year imprisonment. Jane agrees to pick him up when Jamie gets out of prison. Then the couple agreed to find a hotel room, that one night date, turned out to make Jane pregnant, Jamie convinced Jane that he could be a good father. In February, 2010, the couple married at Jamie's grandmother's house. But their married life was filled with endless physical and psychological torture. Jamie goes from being a sweet guy to being mean, from being considerate to being possessive and finally being physically abusive. One night after a fight, Jamie stole the ashes of Jane's late mother. Jane reported it to the police and Jamie was again arrested on the 20th of August, 2010. Jamie was jailed, shortly after their baby was born. On the 30th of January, 2011. The court decided to give Jamie a release conditional, Jamie finally got out of prison, Jane gave Jamie another chance, hoping they could be a normal family. But by that time Jamie had started using drugs, which made him even more violent. Jamie began to disturb the children from Jane's previous marriage. Feeling threatened by all of Jamie's behavior, Jane again reported Jamie to the police. On the 31st of March, 2011, Jamie was again arrested for parole violations. For several months Jane felt safe. Until on the 31st of October, 2011, Jamie was released again. His face is covered with tattoos like the character in the Joker movie. And Jamie starts to haunt Jane again, he is outside staring at Jane's room, and leaves before the police arrive. This makes Jane very paranoid, Jamie does this on purpose, for him it is part of game, and Jamie felt he had won. One day on the 14th of November, 2011, Jamie called Jane and said that he had killed someone at the El Morocco Hotel. Jane was shocked and checked the truth by calling 911, but there was no report of a murder at the hotel. After a few days passed, Jane saw the news that Jamie told earlier, and it turned out to be true. The 13th of November, 2011, a cleaning service found the lifeless body of Yvette Pina in an El Morocco hotel room. Knowing this Jane also reported to the police that Jamie was the culprit, Yvette Pina only met Jamie that night earlier, he was found dead with a knife and scissors stuck in her back. The 18th of November, 2011. Jamie was arrested for murder in the first degree of Yvette Pina and sentenced to life imprisonment. In the investigation Jamie denies the murder, but he admits he is a cruel person and tends to commit crimes. Even though in prison Jamie still disturbs Jane, one of them by sending a dead mouse to Jane's house that was sent from inside the prison, somehow Jamie was able to do that. In an interview Jamie said, that all this is an extraordinary adventure, there is laughter, there is joy, there are tears of sadness. She likes it very much. Even if time repeats itself Jamie will still do it. According to him he would rather kill people's lives than have sex with the most beautiful woman in the world though. In the interview it was known that Jamie had killed two other people who were not publicly known. Jamie also said he would kill if there was a chance. No matter they were teachers, lawyers, gang members, parents and even his own family. He did it just to fulfill his desire. This man sick. The 28th of March, 2017, more than five years from his arrest, Jamie pleaded guilty to the murder committed against Yvette Pina. Then in May, 2017 he was transferred to another prison, in that prison Jamie often abused his cellmates, so he was placed in a cell alone. Two years later, the prison warden finally allowed Jamie to have a cellmate, 
but Jamie was again the center of public attention, he committed a very gruesome murder, Jamie was found in his cell along with the body of his new friend who was dead. His cellmate was just transferred there less than 24 hours. The victim was Louis Romero a 44-year-old man, Romero was found dead around 7.30am on the 9th of March. 2019. Romero has spent 27 years on the murder of a woman in 1992 when he was a teenager. According to reports in a few days Romero will be released from prison, but unfortunately for him, together with a cell with the psychopath Jamie. Authorities believe Jamie Ojuna attacked with a modified razor, the razor was found in a cell found inside by the police. Investigators do not know how long Romero was conscious when the heinous incident took place, but considering the weapon used was a razor blade, it is possible that Romero was conscious for about three to four hours. The incident was horrific, but for the prosecutor, Jamie's family, and Yvette Pina's family, it was not surprising. Even the investigators said, if there is a death penalty, Jamie is the one who deserves it. As a result of the murder, Jamie Ojuna was threatened with the death penalty. Romero's family filed a lawsuit why Romero was placed in the same cell with Jamie Ojuna. Even though Jamie has a bad track record in prison, there is speculation that this incident was orchestrated by prison officials, as there should be checks every 30 minutes. But Jamie escapes and commits a sadistic act that night. In a report it said that there was an omission of officers in the count of officers who said Romero was still alive. And what is even more surprising is that the prison authorities contacted the family via telephone and asked the family for money so that the victim's body could be released from prison. Early in 2021, Jamie Ojuna was considered mentally to be tried so he could not be put on trial until Jamie was declared mentally healthy. In a psychiatric examination, Jamie suffered from a very severe mental illness. The diagnosis included schizophrenia spectrum disorder, antisocial personality disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. According to reports Jamie is currently in a prison that has a psychiatric program to treat inmates or patients with mental health disorders. Ichila Jamie Ojuna is a very sadistic man. That's our video this time, if you like it like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Greetings from Shonya Studio.